All right. Um, our next our next keynote speaker is gonna uh, take happiness from a scientific uh, perspective, and uh, so it's it, well it can be uh, a little complicated, but I know for sure that he will, he will tell it in a in a very uh, a very uh, uh, well in a very good way, so everybody can understand. I'm very curious. Give it a, a, a big hand, uh, Mr. Jan Schroen. Good afternoon. Um, when Wendy came to me asking if I would like to talk something scientific about happiness, because it was a very serious day today in a comedian club, <laughs> I thought I'll have to do it in a very scientific way. So I prepared a PowerPoint like we scientists do. <laughs> <coughs> And I did it in the format in a scientific way, like starting with a definition. Pay attention. <laughs> Happiness is a mental or emotional state of well-being characterized by positive or pleasant emotion ranging from contentment to intense joy. So this is what you're experiencing now. <laughs> it could also be something else you could be experiencing. Emotions experienced when in state of well-being. But then we have the problem again, what is well-being? That was one of the things, well, we'll focus on later. Because after a definition in a scientific format, there's always a brief historical review. So, what is happiness in history? Well, it's quite easy, it's, it's eudaimonia. Like you all educated people know Aristotle told about eudaimonia. Uh, eudaimonia life is one of virtuous activity in accordance with the reason. That's quite interesting. So when you are happy, there's always virtue. Well, to be honest, when I was raised by my parents, virtue never gave me happiness. But still, Aristotle said, to be happy, to feel happiness, you always have to be virtue. But then you have to understand what he means with being virtuous. It's not our moral virtue. It's being righteous to itself, to be what you are. And for instance, this cup, this glass, is happy when it is a glass. So when you put in water, the glass is happy. If you use it as a hammer to pull in a nail in the wall, the glass is not happy because it's not the virtue of the glass. So when you are what you are, according to Aristotle, you are happy. And one of my favorite Greek, Epicurus, and I don't know, maybe you can remember him from your student times, because he's the one who made the Feast of Bacchus. Epicurus said, the Eudemonian life is the life of pleasure, but the life of pleasure coincides with the life of virtue. Again, there is this virtue again. Being yourself means being happy. So, if it's that simple, why ask a scientist to come explain about happiness? Just be yourself. It's not only something we know in, uh, in the West. Also in the East, like Lao Tzu, the big Taoist thinker, said in his Tao Te Ching, well, if you explain Tao Te Ching, Ching means a classic book, Tao going your way, and there means uh, virtue. So he also explains, if you are going your path, walking your way, and you do it with your virtue, the virtue of being who you are, then there is happiness. But happiness is complex, as I told you. So happiness needs a, a systemic approach. When we scientists have to go and look at uh, 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 happiness, we cannot just do a research in a linear way. We have to look at it in a more complex, self-organizing, dynamic way. For instance, like this. Happiness, well-being, resilience is, is built out of all these parts, social part, behavioral part, psychological part, nutritional, spiritual, medical, environmental, and physical. And these are built up by 
smaller parts. And actually these are built up by smaller parts and smaller parts, the same way as the circles in the previous uh, 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 slides I showed you. At our institute what we are doing is we are collecting every study that has been published on every single part and then see if we can connect them to each other. So we get these slides which are connected. So if I go to physical, for instance, uh, here, and we go maybe to um, flexibility, and underneath flexibility there's something like sleep. If I deprive you from sleep, you can imagine that your flexibility decreases. And by decreasing your flexibility, your physical condition decreases too. So your total well-being, happiness and resilience also decreases. This is how we start connecting everything to each other. And we are building this huge tool in which we can uh, predict, but also simulate physical changes, emotional changes, spiritual changes. So at the moment that scientists start telling you how to be happy and what is happiness, or religion starts to tell you what to do to be happy, or business starts telling you to buy things to be happy, then I think it's time for me to stop being a scientist because happiness is a common good, it's free and it's part of human nature. Thank you. <laughs>